Good afternoon. How's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Sunday, June 29th, 2025. Getting close to July here. 12, 12 p.m. West Coast time. Latest activity here on the earthquake map shows a 2.4 north of the Bay Area. There in Northern California outside of Santa Rosa. That's connected to the um, Rogers Creek Fault, it looks like. A little bit of uptick here in the uh, last couple hours or so. Notice this movement up north. That's the Clear Lake Volcanic Field associated with geothermal operations. Uh, whenever they poke around up there, it produces earthquakes, but also at the same time, they create some energy with their whole process. Uh, also a little earthquake up here in Northern California. 2.9 within the last hour. That is just off the Mendocino triple point boundary. Getting a lot of activity here recently. Uh, looks like we've had a number of quakes here this morning. Now this quake 2.3, 5 o'clock this morning here, 14 miles deep underneath this area, not associated with the Mad River Fault. These are surface fractures, but this is associated with the subduction zone here, the southern end of the Cascadia. And boy, it's been a hot area for earthquake activity here recently. Uh, watching this region quite closely here, of course, the southern end of the Cascadia uh, could potentially i uh, getting ready here to uh, produce a big earthquake. I've covered this a number of times here in previous videos. Uh, just pointing out these earthquakes today. There's quite a few of them. Also one back over here across Redding this morning as well. This region outside of Redding, seen a, a handful of earthquakes as well. But uh, relatively deep underneath this area. So it's all associated with the strain that's going on out here. The interaction between the North American plate and the Juan de Fuca plate, or in this sense, the Gorda plate. It's going to be a small little micro plate here. The interaction and the stress that's being uh, accumulated out here is affecting areas inland. Now, this area definitely uh, is capable of producing a sizable earthquake. Um, of course, if you take into account a full rupture here across the Cascadia, that could result in a 9.0 or greater. I don't know if we have enough strain uh, for that uh, the big one, but I certainly think we got... Uh, a time frame here of uh, pretty soon near 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 term of seeing a partial rupture there across the Cascadia just with what's everything everything that's been going on there plus the amount of time that has passed since uh, since the last big one and uh, regular intervals here in between big events uh, result in partial ruptures as well and we have not had one of those yet across the southern end uh, the San Andreas fault here number of earthquakes yesterday this this movement uh, was happening roughly about the same time as the activity due east here on the eastern side of California, just north of Death Valley. Um, nothing big going on here for now. It looks like this has come to a halt there along the San Andreas Fault. Some movement down south off of the creeping section, uh, close to the park field segment down here, but really nothing on that uh, system for now. Uh, the movement yesterday stirring things up out there with the four-pointer. Uh, in the area of the um, Dyer, I believe that's right, Dyer, Nevada area. This is, well, Nevada, they have it in Nevada, but this is in to the California area near Deep Springs Valley, the uh, Inyo Mountains. There's some fault systems that sit over here. Uh, it's at the base of these mountains here, so it may be potentially associated with the, um, the Deep Springs Fault. But a uh, number of earthquakes out here yesterday, including the four-pointer. I'm going to show you guys the largest magnitude, 4.6. Uh, that was followed up uh, about an hour later by, so far, a 3.9 aftershock, the largest aftershock there in that little sequence of events. Uh, today, if we look at what's happened today, uh, a number of earthquakes uh, in the one range mainly. Got to, oh, probably eight or nine of them here after midnight. Uh, continuing to keep an eye here on California. This region had a uh, a similar event, uh, some earthquakes swarming out here last year. Last year, excuse me, and uh, almost immediately following that activity, we've seen elevated movement taking place here with a, a five pointer outside of Bakersfield. The Puente Hills thrust fault started acting up. Malibu Coast fault over here was thrown off earthquakes, and things looked like they were about ready to pop last year. Um, and uh, it was following some events up here. So we'll, I'm interested to see if that uh, takes place again. What do we got here? Two-pointer outside of the uh, San Fernando area on the Sierra Madre Fault Zone. 
trail of earthquakes leading up here in the last week. Mainly small microquakes. Nothing uh, above 2.5, I don't think. Well, maybe one there uh, on the unnamed fault. North Hollywood Hills Fault, I believe that one is. Let's see if I can get it to key up. Yep, right there. Unnamed. Uh, this thing's a little catchy. Unnamed fault system. That's what it's called right here. It's just kind of being uh, odd today. But, yeah. So one earthquake further up north down the up the line here in the last hour. Uh, extreme Southern California. I don't see anything of abnormal activity for now. Uh, this is very typical on any given day to see 36 earthquakes. This is pretty much on average the number of earthquakes we should see there across Southern California in the microquake department. Some movement over here around Long Beach it looks like with um, a couple ones there within minutes of each other. Continue to watch the West Coast. Up into the Pacific Northwest, nothing showing up here, but it is the weekend, and they normally don't produce earth. They normally don't um, put out the earthquakes here on the weekends for whatever reason. So that's why it's absent, um, unless there's something of, uh, I think, above 2.5 or so, then they'll start reporting it. Same for Yellowstone National Park. That's why I need to double check the. Um, the maps here, see what we got for the recorded seismograms. And there's at least, uh, I do see one or maybe even a handful of them out here. Nothing big. A couple over there around Parker Peak as well. But these are all generally small uh, microquakes. The blue lines are indicative of, uh, indicate, indicate wind or thunderstorms out there. That's what we've seen uh, yesterday, late afternoon. That should kick up again. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. Moving on. Texas oil fields out here. Still uh, well, a split bag, it looks like, between yesterday and today. Nothing here in the last hour. The New Madrid seismic zone quiet for now. Same for the eastern portion of the country. Uh, looking at the bigger, broader view of things out here. Still got a lot of activity there across the southern end of the Nankai Trough and movement up north here from yesterday. Of course, that leaves that subduction zone right in the... Uh, a middle point boundary there where a lot of stress is accumulating, I'm sure. A uh, number of fours out there, a bunch of threes. Let's see what we got here for the latest quake in this area. Looks to be a 5.2 uh, just after midnight, my time, local time here along the West Coast. So things are still stirring up, and there's still an earthquake activity occurring in that area. Uh, but these are, looks like, below that 4.5 threshold that the USGS uses here on the map. So... Even though the last one was, you know, around midnight, it's still, still kicking up out there. So got to watch that closely. The Nankai Trough fairly well primed for some big earthquake activity. Uh, up the coast here, a couple earthquakes from yesterday and today. Looks like that's the southern end of the Nankai Trough. One of the latest ones there, four-pointer, fairly deep into the region. Uh, older activity there from uh, yesterday in Alaska. Uh, newer activity. See what we got here on the globe. Where's, where's our hot spot today? Oh, we got 4.1 south here off the Baja California region. And that uh, between these two quakes, a four pointer yesterday and the 4.1 uh, fairly recent, that kind of leaves extreme Southern California right there in that mid middle point stressed areas. Uh, as far as elevated activity goes, wow, it's a little hard to spot. I mean, it's broader uh, in terms of distance and coverage out here. Uh, a lot of newer quakes here across the Indonesia area, but that's uh, very common. It's a crunch zone. I, I call it the crunch zone because that's pretty much where all the uh, plates tend to point at in terms of the general plate movement. This is a GPS movement map of the plates, and of course, the Indonesia area, Philippines region, got all these plates pointing towards that general area as you can see on the map so we'll kind of watch things here today see uh, what takes place the Atlantic Ocean pretty quiet I think Hawaii out there is getting uh, close to an eruption here let's go see what the uh, Kilauea volcano is doing real quick we'll go over here to the webcams and check out the summit Ooh, it looks like we're just getting started here because uh, just a short time ago it wasn't like this uh, looks like we're starting to get some decent fountaining going on from one of the vents here. I don't know if this is a full uh, eruption yet. Let's see what the USGS is stating real quick. 
Lava fountains from the north vent are currently reaching heights of about 200 feet, but that's fairly minimal. Looks like this just kind of kicked up here this morning. Yeah, see? So here in the last hour, things have start, started to get going here. I'm sure those fountaining uh, lava fountains will really take off because I don't see any change yet here on the inflation data. Once those fountains really start uh, depleting the magma below, then um, this will drop like a rock, similar to what we've seen here in the last 27 episodes here. Is this number 28 or 29? It's kind of hard to keep track of them. Um, episode 27. All right. So uh, 27 will end here, I'm sure, once it gets going after a few hours or so. And then uh, we'll, we'll rinse and repeat. There's nothing, nothing new here that I see that's going to change uh, what's going on here? It's just a rinse and repeat pattern. 27 episodes of very similar eruption at the very same spot there at the Kilauea Volcano. Man, if I had the money and time, I would definitely go over there to catch that before it uh, before it does the next eruption. So now is a prime time to do it. Pretty neat, I'm sure. All right, uh, so watch for that. That increased throughout the day today. New Zealand down there, we got some activity from yesterday, it looks like. A little three-pointer, North Island. But technically today, this is our uh, somewhat of our quiet zone. Some older activity from yesterday with a whole lot of empty spaces out there. I'm sure that will fill in. Uh, aside from that, uh, keep an eye there on the west coast. We got that. We got a four-pointer coming in to cross the uh, Middle America Trench, it looks like. Let's go ahead and check out space weather, see if anything is popping on the sun. Looks like we got a prominence feature here. About ready to lift off, off the northwestern area of the sun. That should be directed away from Earth. A pretty neat little feature. As far as any flaring goes, still pretty quiet. Look at this, in the last three days, only one sea flare. Well, maybe a couple barely sea flare category flares. But uh, we're still way down into the B7.5 category. Flare threat remains low. Aurora activity for now um, pretty much non-existent here. Really not seeing anything of any uh, elevated activity. Um, I do, let me check over here real quick, see what we got for the magnetogram. There's that sunspot region there that I was keeping my eye on on the far side of the sun here in the last couple days. Uh, it's just coming into view. Hard to tell, though, if it's got any complexity within that uh in that sunspot core the ones that we do have well they're fairly stable or decaying such as this one a clear-cut separation of the core that will continue to die off and uh, just give us minimal very minimal solar flare conditions like I say we got to keep an eye on this one back over here we'll see what's in store uh, once that gets into the uh, earth directed view I do want to double check the electric power community dashboard this right here kind of tells you, uh, well, if anything's coming up here in terms of space weather activity, the sun in the yellow, earth in the green, stereo A in the red. Looks like we got a little bit of a CME, maybe. What do you want to call it near? That's that's a near miss or near hit. <laughs> One of the two. Uh, I, yeah, it doesn't look like that's going to affect earth that much. There was a sea flare that produced a... Uh, a CME, but it looks like it's mainly pointing away from the planet uh, towards stereo A here in the red. Here in Earth, on Earth, maybe, just maybe a little bit, but uh, I'm really not expecting much here for the uh, solar storming conditions. No auroras there really in the forecast for now, folks, for the aurora watchers. Uh, Storm Prediction Center for severe weather. Everything's working here. I think it is. There we go. A little weird. This looks a little different. Maybe they're doing a little update here. Kind of loaded slow. Uh, current day one for severe weather. Man, you guys see that huge tornado that uh, Reed Timmer caught? A whole bunch of other storm chasers out there caught too. Up there in South Dakota. Beautiful. Absolutely one of the most uh, stunning tornadoes I've seen. And I think uh, he, he calls that his, uh, his uh, prized possession as well. Uh, looks like that severe weather is going to shift to the south a little bit. No tornado threats on the map here for Sunday. Got some wind and some hail threats out there. Uh, for the day on Monday, the start of the work week, got, uh, interestingly, a marginal risk for some severe weather 
across southern Oregon and northern California. No tornado threat. Looks like wind and maybe uh, maybe just some wind and a little bit of hail threat out here for Monday. So not a whole lot of uh, not a whole lot happening uh, for severe weather for now. After a couple days of interesting weather out in the Dakotas, one little spike of an earthquake on Anza. Uh, it looks like there's a couple there on the San Juan Batista station, very small ones, but uh, we'll keep an eye on things here. See uh, how the day goes. Just make sure you have an earthquake plan out here. It's been pretty active. Uh, of course, things can happen in a blink of an eye. Just got to be prepared. We will catch you guys out here later. It's already hot out. Hundred and supposed to be 104 today where I live in Northern California, and it'd be okay if it was a dry heat, but. I live out here. I've lived out here the majority of my life, so we're surrounded by thousands and thousands of acres of rice fields, and rice fields are they're soaked with water. It's pretty much standing water out there, and the sun beating down on the rice field and the water, ooh, it makes it feel a little bit like the Gulf down there in Texas and Louisiana. I'm not joking. Dew points right now where I live outside around my house is 74 degree dew point. That is extremely humid when it's going to be 104. The feels like temperature is probably going to be up around 115 or so. It's absolutely brutal. Uh, but that's that's the uh, agricultural aspect of the valley out here. Um, the rice fields though, are, are the big water the big water uh, soakers. And, uh, man, it, it is humid and muggy out here, let me tell you. All right, so what do we got here? That's an earthquake there north around the Rogers Creek Fault. All right, I'm out of here, folks. Have yourself a wonderful day. I think I'm going to stay inside. I might venture out with the kids later and get some pool time in, but I don't know. It's just it's just so hot where I, I don't even want to be outside in this weather. It's not good. Have a good one. Hopefully it's much cooler where you're at. Take care and uh, enjoy the rest of your Sunday.